I started the morning with a description of my first sortie, which was uh, to the north of the canal where I uh, attacked in the dark. And my main shock was the fact that uh, the controller and then the leader told me that I had to put my sight not on the western part of the can side of the canal, but rather on the eastern side of the canal. And it, it didn't even occur to me that the um, Egyptians crossed the canal so quickly. And in fact, I'm uh, bombing Egyptians who are besieging an Israeli outpost. And um, my last sortie was in aid of uh, uh, a paratrooper force that uh, got into trouble. And uh, I, just, I just realized last Saturday night that I could have been the detonator of uh, nuclear war between the U.S. and the USSR because this uh, sortie took place after the ceasefire was already in effect and uh, none of them liked it in particular, which goes to show that we learn something new every day. However, after two or three uh, months of uh, Yom Kippur War Festival, I said to my family members that perhaps I'm one of the uh, very few that didn't have any trauma uh, from the war. So maybe I should look again. It's true that the war was very uh, uh, difficult and um, I lost many friends, but I might have, maybe it's because I was very young, but I never thought that war would end within uh, six days uh, as a series of victories and that there are only victories in war. And I never thought that there wouldn't be any failures and wouldn't be uh, any um, second attempts. And uh, throughout my uh, 40 years in the military, I don't know if throughout all of them, at least until 1982, I uh, stayed in the army in order to straighten back that uh, uh, airplane wing which was bent in the Yom Kippur War, as it was uh, described at the time. And I left the war with uh, some insights that uh, I kept for many years. First of all, be very careful uh, of complacency, arrogance, and uh, uh, underrating your enemy. All these things I left behind me, doubting everything and looking professionally at everything and anything. From the end of uh, Yom Kippur, I realized that uh, the guys up there don't necessarily know it all. There's a chance that they don't know it all either. And that uh, gap in, in trust that some people mentioned, Ivry, for example, the gap of trust between the pilots and the commanders and the general staff is something that uh, went along with me even when I was on the other side already. And I realized that the dialogue between the uh, soldiers and uh, the commanders is something very important. Later, when I became a commander in the Air Force, I analyzed the failure to obtain air supremacy in the Yom Kippur War. One must realize that uh, the Air Force failed in that. General Ivry described uh, in, in a, uh, an accurate way the situation vis-a-vis -vis the other Air Forces and uh, the Air Force uh, did uh, do a good job in that. However, uh, I came out of the war feeling that uh, the big budgets and the best men possible did not really deliver because uh, we were unable to cope with the uh, anti-aircraft uh, arrays. And therefore, we had to start thinking how to use a much better intelligence system and a much better command and control system and how to use technology because uh, a lot of uh, the uh, uh, weapons against missiles were standoff weapons eventually. So how we can do things completely differently using standoff combat. 
I think I also came out with uh, some important insight of the enemy. They have the same DNA, they have the same type of thinking, they know how to uh, use deception and planning, and there's no reason to underrate them, underestimate them whatsoever. I don't think I was ever considered to underestimate the enemy. And the last thing is that Israel alone, well, Israel is alone, that's what I realized. It's important for us to be able to do our own uh, work. However, as Ben Gurion said, when you go out to war, it's good to have a superpower right behind you, and that's true even today. As far as intelligence is concerned, I didn't really mean to, but at some point, just like Eliseira before me, uh, before me and Ali Ariv uh, before me, I was um, called back from being an attaché in uh, London to be the head of intelligence. And when I became uh, the head of intelligence, I had to um, amend what went wrong in 73. Intelligence uh, was, the, the whole of uh, the intelligence was uh, uh, shocked by the failure of 1973. And I uh, felt that uh, having had uh, peace with uh, Egypt for so many years, for 35 years, and the Syrians not, exa not exactly on their way to uh, the Kinneret, then the intelligence should be doing other things rather than uh, providing early warning. But uh, the chief of staff would not allow me to have, that, to have it that way. I thought, however, that the intelligence should not only provide warning, but also provide information as to how the war can be won. And today, you win a war thanks to very accurate intelligence, which goes together with very accurate weaponry as well. And this is a DNA change in the uh, intelligence because if, uh, because I, I, because I had to take uh, the intelligence back to the middle of the curve. There are two types of errors that you can make. An alpha kind of uh, error, not to uh, provide warning, to uh, underestimate something like Pearl Harbor, September 11 or 1973. But there's another kind of errors as well, and that's overestimating uh, the uh, enemy. Put everybody in gas masks when unnecessary and uh, mobilize the entire reserve force when it's unnecessary. And that involves a lot of uh, money and uh, a high rate of inflation. So if you're a good head of intelligence, you have to be uh, careful of both kinds of errors. And as the head of intelligence, I uh, tried to rectify that, and Gabby can testify. Uh, I often, I tried, I tried not to scare him off things, and I said uh, to him, this can be done, and that can be done, and even though this looks like a recipe for um, a commission of interrogation, uh, we should still do it. So this is what I took with me from the 73 war. You spoke about the relationships between the chief of staff and uh, that of intelligence, but what about the, the committee at the parliament and the government when you know that the uh, inquiry commission that would take place and there was the Vinograd commission during your period could have more of a detrimental effect on the professional arm rather than, than on the actual other arm. No, I left Yom Kippur with a feeling that the military arm was not deprived because they were, there was a blame on them as well and they played a part. And I'm not trying to clean the politicians. As I said, I was only a lieutenant at the time. It was very difficult for me to judge the whole, all the politicians and that all those echelons. And I think that the military also made tremendous mistakes on the building of the force. It was mentioned here, the actual neglect of the anti-tank missiles, of the infantry, 
um, by the actual culture of the army, the way it was run, and various professional errors in the way they managed the war. So I therefore left Yom Kippur with a feeling that both of those arms had had um, played, perhaps I um, perhaps shared identical blame at the time. One actually was blamed by a Granat's uh, committee and the other, I think, by the public as well. I think that both were blamed. When you become the head of the intelligence and you sit in your bureau and you look at all the prede your predecessors, you know that the chance of leaving without some kind of commission of inquiry with some kind of, uh, or rather a nice farewell party is only 50-50%. But I think, but I still think that the role is a very responsible one, and you can't s start thinking about the commission of inquiry all day that might take place. If I can show you some of the minutes of those meetings, wherein my officers have said, "Amos, this is going to end with a commission of inquiry. Let's say that or that," and I'd say, "No, that is erroneous." And I think that you can really judge an ethical, professional head of intelligence because he knows that there's so many things that a commission of inquiry could actually judge him for, but that should never distort his, the right way of judgment. So I'm just saying that um, I, I, when Sharon actually got his, um, suffered his stroke was when I started the head of intelligence. Um, and I think you can imagine that, but I still sat with quite a group and I think that in that room on that day, there were minutes, there's a stenographer. And I developed um, those sort of set that those feelings. When are people talking for the stenographer and when are they speaking to me? And I managed to navigate thing. And but far too often there are real significant operational issues vis-a-vis -vis, um, real campaigns or warning issues. But with all due respect to Agranat, you leave them behind and you go ahead.